It takes just two cells to make a human being. Two cells and a miracle. In nine months, the pair of cells blossoms into billions. Where once was nothing, now grows a tiny human, gently nestled and protected in mother's womb. Together, mother and child share this odyssey of life, nurturing, and rapid change. A magnificent adventure called pregnancy. Each of us is unique, and yet every one of us is more alike than we might imagine. Our chromosomes and genes are almost identical. And we all got here in much the same way, voyagers on the same miraculous journey as our cells became ourselves. This is a story of that journey. It's about the bond between mother and child. A bond that starts invisibly from the moment of conception. From the very first moment, when two tiny cells begin to transform into a new person, the mother's body starts to reshape and remodel itself. She becomes perfectly suited for carrying the most precious cargo imaginable the fragile beginning of life itself. Reproduction is both exquisite and exquisitely common, perfect in its design. It begins the instant 400 million sperm launch against the cervix, the entrance to the woman's reproductive system. Each is programmed to seek out the egg and fertilize it. It's a risky mission. Many sperm perish in the acidic climate of the vagina. The strongest make their way through the cervix to start their marathon. The sperm must swim the equivalent of nine miles through hostile waters to reach the egg. Out of 200 to 400 million sperm, only a few make it to uh, the egg itself, and it does so by whipping its tail. Vigorous, but also desperate and doomed, most get lost in the folds of the uterus or follow the wrong fallopian tube where no egg exists. The remaining sperm race toward their target, and only one can fertilize the egg. The egg is one of the biggest cells in the human body. Of the hundreds of millions of sperm, mere hundreds find it. They surround the egg, each trying to burrow its way in. The instant one sperm penetrates the zona pellucida, or eggshell, the exterior closes and the race is over. All other sperm are shut out. The egg is sealed and so is the fate of the person who will grow from it. The fertilized egg now has all the genetic information it needs to create new life. A glorious chain reaction has begun. Like the embrace that began the process, the nucleus of the egg and sperm 
join inside the egg nearly a day later. Together, they create the very blueprint from which a new person will be made. You've got 23 chromosomes from your father and you've got 23 chromosomes from your mother. Inside the nucleus of the egg and sperm is a pronucleus, a capsule containing the 23 chromosomes on which the DNA code is written. Those two pronuclei will come close together in that position. The chromosomes in each will have doubled, so you've got 46 in each. The pronuclei will, will dissolve. Those, those chromosomes come together, and they're then pulled apart. And the cell then divides, and you've got a two-cell embryo. Only two cells, and yet the future baby's sex, looks, even potential health problems are already determined. This tiny speck is pushed by finger-like cilia through the fallopian tube toward the uterus. On the long journey, it divides again and again. At 32 cells, this cluster begins its transformation. The cells divide into distinct types, one type destined to become the baby, the other its supporting organ, the placenta. The cells continue to feverishly multiply, unnoticed by the mother. In six days, one cell has bloomed to nearly 200, and the embryo has outgrown its protective bubble. Like a flower bursting from its bud, it emerges and expands, burrowing into the soft, warm folds of mother's uterus. In a matter of days, cells become structures, building a human framework. Among the first is the neural tube, which in short time will become the brain and the spine. It's at this stage that the cells on the back of the embryo will start rising, will form a tube and actually come together at the top of that tube and fuse. And this all begins at the midpoint of the back and it'll proceed in a zipper-like fashion from the midpoint towards the head and towards the tail. By the end of the third week comes another milestone. The head and the tail portion of the tube fuse completely. A brain starts to form. The tail, a dramatic reminder of our primordial past, eventually fades away. Everything about the young embryo is primitive. Until the placenta develops, a yolk sac provides nourishment for the first weeks. If you were to look at a three and a half week old embryo, it would be very difficult to look at it and say, this is a human. It may look like the same thing as a, as a mouse embryo or a pig embryo. They all look very similar. By four weeks, the human resemblance is not much clearer, but mother and child are already communing. The embryo sends chemical signals and the mother's body prepares to nurture forging an unbreakable lifetime bond. By the end of the fourth week, the mother might suspect she's pregnant. To the outside world, there's no sign of the changes within. Proteins secreted by the developing placenta tell the mother's body to stop releasing eggs and prevent the uterine lining from shedding. The embryo's fragile world inside the uterus is now secure. By the fifth week comes a glorious explosion of life force. Within the watery, amniotic, fluid-filled cocoon, the embryo grows more than a million new cells every minute. Each of these cells has a job to do. A critical point during embryogenesis is the point at which all of the organs are signaled to begin developing. The genes that all have to be turned on at that point all have to be done like a, a well-conducted orchestra. The heart is the organ that develops first. The cells destined to become heart cells begin their first erratic flutters soon after the egg emerges.